finding yourself in a stampede of people fleeing some unseen danger in the water can send you into a panic. Or seeing a group of people running on the streets, your first response is to run as well, to first avoid the apparent danger. Fear can spread in an instant amongst all sorts of animals. So biologists have named this phenomenon fear contagion. So fear contagion is basically when uh, an individual observes fear in others, it also expresses fear. And so you have a contagion of an emotion. Basically, it's like an alarm system. You can rely on others to detect the threat in the environment. It's also considered to be one of the first steps towards more complex social behaviors. It's regarded as the basis for empathy. I feel what you feel. And so exploring the evolutionary origins and neural mechanisms behind fear contagion presented an exciting opportunity for a group of researchers at the Gulbenkian Institute of Science in Portugal. So far, this has been mainly studied in rodents. And in rodents, we have a quite good understanding of the neural mechanisms that underlie fear contagion. Those studies had shown that oxytocin, a hormone commonly associated with love and caring, not distress, was essential to fear contagion. But so far, no one had tested oxytocin in fish, which represented a very distant branch of the evolutionary tree from mammals. Would their form of fear contagion follow the same behavioral and neurochemical rules as mammals? To answer this question, the research team genetically modified zebrafish so that they could not produce or regulate oxytocin. The team then ran experiments comparing the behavior of these mutant fish to the normal fish. What we did was to have two tanks where we had in one tank the subject fish, and then in the other tank we had a shoal of zebrafish, which served as the demonstrators. The researchers then injected a chemical known to produce a fear response, called Shrekstoff, into the tank with the demonstrator fish. The first thing it does is the zigzag, trying basically to escape, and this behavior is then followed by freezing. And the observer that watches this alarmed individuals, they adopt the freezing strategy. Demonstrating that the fear contagion will spread right through the glass of their tanks. However, the mutant fish, lacking oxytocin pathways in their brains, reacted very differently. I remember trying to see when they would behave just like their partners in the tank, but they behaved as if nothing uh, happened. I mean, this was like an eureka moment for me. To confirm their results, the researchers then gave some of these mutant fish a little booster shot of oxytocin and ran the experiment again. This time, the mutants, seeing their alarmed neighbors frozen in fear, froze as well. And so what this shows is that oxytocin is not only necessary, but it is sufficient for the expression of social fear contagion. A subset of these animals were then used to look at the neural regulation. What we got was a molecular snapshot of the activity of a zebrafish brain when zebrafish was engaged in social fear contagion. Interestingly, our findings show that two regions that are similar to the regions that have been implicated in mammalian species are involved in the process of fear contagion. Although the behavioral and neurochemical similarities between zebrafish and mammals' fear contagion was clear, a lingering question remained. Did they actually recognize that their neighbor was in distress, or was it just their neighbor's movements that they were cued in on? To find out, the researchers set up an aquatic movie theater. On one side of the tank, a video screen shows a familiar fish swimming in a relaxed state. On the other side, the same fish is shown in distress. As you might expect, normal zebrafish stuck between the two screens mimic the distressed behaviors from the second video, while the oxytocin-free mutant behaved as though nothing alarming was happening. The researchers then replaced the video of the distressed fish with footage of the neutral swimming fish and allowed the observers to freely swim about their tank. Mutants of oxytocin, they just get swimming normally, meaning that they were unable to perceive the differences in the states of fish. Meanwhile, the fish with normal oxytocin pathways seemed to remember that there was a distressed neighbor on one side of the tank and gravitated towards it. In mammals, approaching and interacting with a previously distressed individual, despite the higher possibility of nearby danger, is known as pro-social behavior and has been linked directly to oxytocin. 
And so I think future avenues of research are those related to proto-empathy behaviors being present in fish. As for the mystery of when and how fear contagion developed in animals? We cannot conclusively say what we are seeing is as a result of having a common ancestor. Or if the same selective pressure led to the evolution independently of the same behavior in two distinct lines. For that, we would need to do more experiments with uh, in the evolutionary branches that link fish to mammals to try to disentangle that. In either scenario, the discovery that fish use similar mechanisms to enable their fear contagion as us mammals presents a tantalizing line of inquiry for both evolutionary biologists and neuroscientists to eventually reel in.